All right, here we go, round two, game two. We have awesome mana. We've got three of it. We've got all of our colors. So I'm going to keep that. Uh, we can go turn one palace into uh, turn two bell strike or parapet if we really want it. Did he really let us go first? Okay, well, that's fine. Uh, I do not mind. So parapet or bell strike if we really need it, or we can play the second one tapped so that we can play the third one untapped, or we can have our cake and eat it too. Actually, no, we can't, because those are both green. So, I will uh, only have my cake. I will not eat it. So that's right. You heard it here first. Jimmy is not eating his cake in order to crack corn. Jimmy is the fourth type of magic player, very similar to Johnny. It's like a Johnny that loves puns. So LSV is like a spike Jimmy. You heard it here first. Okay. So, he's got the Bonkin again, which is not a huge deal. All right, so do I slam the Ascendancy just to let him outlast and then Parapet? I think so. I think that that is what I do. Okay. So, black, blue, and a green. And I get out my Ascendancy. So now I am just digging for uh, Sidisi. I'm also going to have this out pretty soon. So let's see, next turn, if I have two in the yard, that makes this cost four, so I could play this as early as next turn if I wanted to. I could also use my four mana to parapet and bell strike if I want to get back into that same uh, conundrum where I bell strike something that could use it. Though that does make him tie up a lot of mana. Ooh, he's got a herald, huh? Hmm. I probably actually want to want to bell strike the herald because he could swarm me out pretty well otherwise. Okay. Hmm. Scheming. No, I don't think that I want to scheme right now, so I'm going to put both of these in the yard. I know it's a little short-sighted on the scheme. Hey, Sidisi, there we go. That's all I wanted for Christmas. Okay. Um, there we go. So, here comes Sidisi. Uh, a blue green, and why not a black? I'll use this one for the colorless. So now I have my combo, the Sidisi and Sultai Ascendancy. So from here on out, I am just making zombies and making sure Sidisi does not die. Alright, let's see if Sidisi is about to die. He does have all of his junk colors. If I didn't say before, a Mistfire Weaver went in off of Sidisi. All right, he comes into combat, and does not attack, so he didn't have any kind of shenanigans for a white slash black. All right, so pretty happy for both of these to go into the yard. Play it like that. Ice Feather Aven. Okay, well that could be nice. Good tempo play if I get one more mana. So in the meantime... Let's see, seven in the yard? Okay, so I can I can do all different kinds of shenanigans. Um, I can take the power off of the board there. And then parapet to make sure that nothing else gets through. Nothing else will, but okay. So the first thing that we're gonna do is take that power off of the board like that. And the next thing we're gonna do is play the parapet. as such. Then after that we're going to swing because you really shouldn't play spells pre-combat. Okay. Let's come in with, an, in with everybody that doesn't have summoning sickness. Let's see if I can get myself another zombie. Yep. Awesome. Dropped a spell snatcher. And then after that Assuming that there's no shenanigan that kills this guy. Yeah, okay. Then I get to play this. And use my mana and graveyard so efficiently. I don't even care what they are. I'm just so happy I've got my combo going. Okay, so next turn, if I really want to, I 
can probably set myself up to draw land to be able to bounce something in the same turn. Bounce a parapet if I really wanted to. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to send everything to the yard. I do have another delve thing that I can get out. Yeah, I guess I'm just using the soul tide to really scry at this point. So just looking for the higher end spells in my deck. Alright, so he's going to get himself a chump blocker. Which is fine. I am eventually going to want to kill that before I can take down my brood tyrant. Right of the serpent, perfect. Alright, so put that into my graveyard. Okay. Put this on top of my library. So... Now I just need that fourth land to be able to do something with it, right? Okay. So I'm going to Ice Feather Aven face down as such. And then next turn, if he outlasts it, I'll bounce it. And then after that, eventually I'll have the mana to write it. Okay. So coming in with the team. I also have enough mana to be able to use the parapet at the end of his turn. Although I don't necessarily see him attacking, so... I guess it doesn't do anything other than just get through for one every turn. Okay, I got myself another zombie. I'll send it back over. I'm at 14 cards in the yard, so I'd try not to deck myself. I've got him on 11, which is pretty low considering that I've got four zombies. Uh, about to be a 2-2 flyer, and a 3-3 flyer, and a parapet that can get through for one every turn. If I need to, I can just leave this guy at home so I don't deck myself. Alright, we've got a debilitating injury, which is well played. Morph was going to do a fair amount for me. And my injuries so far have been debilitating. That card has done a ton of work against me. Both matches. Alright, so this is a 2-3, and the 1-1 one, one together can kill Sidisi, which means I need to draw land. Okay, I do get to toss that into the yard, and that is not a land. I'd prefer to have a land off the top, so we'll toss that in the bin. We get a Ruthless Ripper, oh, which we do get to flip up, so that's not the worst draw. I can't attack him with Sidisi anymore, though. So the Ruthless Ripper is going to have to be it for me. Now I can't attack in with all that other stuff, so we should be good there. So Sidisi stays home, but everybody else will go. Alright, so he wants to pick off one of the zombies for free, block another, and is there a chump block? Do I end up trading a zombie for a warrior? No, he will let that one go through. Alright, so I lose a zombie for two damage, which I am absolutely fine with. At the end of turn, I'll be able to get him with the parapet. Assuming I remember. With only four mana, I feel like this one's mine. He does have six cards in hand. And so far, he's in the tank trying to figure out exactly what he's going to do. So the good news for me is that he doesn't have a really clear path to victory. He's uh, sitting on ten minutes and twenty seconds. And his path to victory is so unclear, he just decides to concede. Alright, so we're going to return to details. I'm the last guy to finish, so we're on to the finals. We're going to be playing Evil Homer 28. That's right, Pastor Dustin 2 versus Evil Homer 28, a match.